Islam being the submission to the will of God. And that was the essence of the religion that was there for Adam and Eve. They were put in a garden of trees and one tree they were not supposed to eat from. One tree. This one tree symbolizes what? The few instances where things are prohibited in Islam. People like to say, oh, Muslims, you know, they're just, everything is haram. It's haram this, haram that, haram the other, and you know, you can't turn, everything is haram. It's not true. It's not true. The haram and the halal is like that garden with the one tree. One tree, haram, all of the rest, halal. But what happens? Satan comes to us as he came to Adam. And he named that tree, Shajaratul Khuld. The tree of eternal life. So Adam, before that, he wasn't even thinking about eternal life. But once, eternal life, ah, I want that. I need eternal life. I don't want to die. Right? So then what did he feel? He had to eat from that tree. And that's how Satan operates. He takes that which is haram, beautifies it so much that we feel our life is incomplete unless we taste that haram. Same strategy. Hasn't changed. Reality Haram is few. That's why in the Quran, whenever Allah is talking about haram and halal, He lists the haram things and then He says everything beyond that is halal. So for every haram thing, alcohol, how many other kinds of juice is there for us to drink? Pork, how many kinds of meat can we eat? Gambling, how many other kinds of games can we play? So on and so forth. For every little thing which has been identified as haram, there are endless halal options. But, but Satan has made that one haram something so attractive that our desires feel and make us feel we cannot live without this. That is his methodology. So, let us be sure, have no doubt, that the haram in Islam is few. The halal is many. And whatever Allah has designated as haram is because there is harm in it and whatever he has designated as halal it's because there is good in it now the good and the evil or the good and the bad are not absolute in the sense that what may be defined as evil harmful may have good elements to it. So, alcohol has a good element. People who grow the grapes, they make money. Those who produce the alcohol, they make money. Those who sell the alcohol, make money. People are benefiting. But the harm that comes to the society far outweighs the good. So when the French doctors tell us and France has the highest incidence of babies born intoxicated, France have the highest incident of any nation on the face of this earth of babies born in a state of intoxication, meaning their people, parents are drinking so much alcohol, the woman even you know, who's giving birth, she's drinking enough alcohol that the baby is born drunk. Highest incidence in the world. So the French doctors say, if you drink half a glass of wine, 
It has been shown statistically to reduce the chances of heart attack. Sounds like a good thing. But reality is that if we compare the good in that half a glass of wine with the evil that comes from alcohol's consumption in the society, we say, hey, we can do without that reduction in heart attack. We can do without it. That is reality. And so on and so forth. Whatever Allah has prohibited is because there is harm in it for us. Even the tree in paradise, all we know is that that tree had harm in it. So Allah told Adam, don't eat from it, Adam and Eve. That's it. And whatever Allah has commanded us to do is good for us. Even if there may be some elements of harm in it. And Allah knows best. And that's why we need a religion. The religion, Islam.